Welcome to the class of history of fundamentalism. Uh, first of all, I introduce you course description. Uh, through this course, the student may gain a basic knowledge of the history of biblical fundamentalism and of the men who were fighting against the enemy of the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Students may also take an interest in the history of fundamentalism in their own country and what they have to do in their future ministries for the Word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, you have to know this course is not just giving you the knowledge. You must have get the spirit and same mind with our ancestor of the faith. So remember all the lessons and apply to your life and to your church and your ministry and even to your country. The next is course text. Of course, first course text is the Bible, the King James Bible. And later I'll give you also lecture notes. And the very good book written by uh, J. Gresham Machen, Christianity and Liberalism. Uh, now, uh, we cannot find this book in bookstore, so you can download from website. So, download freely and read it. And second book is, uh, Carl McIntyre, McIntyre Maxims, edited by, uh, Dr. Timothy Toh. Uh, you can download this file, this book, also from the FEBC website. The third book is the, the Singapore BP Church Story, written by Dr. Reverend Timothy Toh. Uh, this book, a uh, very good book, so learn from the historical books. And next is the course requirement, uh, reading, listening assignment. Uh, you must submit this reading log due uh, until 11 p.m. on May 8, 2020, uh, Friday night. All students uh, must read Appendix 1 and 2. I'll give you later. Uh, with the, um, the lecture notes. And second, McIntyre Maxims by Carl McIntyre and Singapore BP Church History by Timothy Toll. Not all books, just pages 7 to 56. And this is a listening assignment, National Heritage, Heritage Broad interview with Timothy Toll. 27th of May, March to 9th of December 1998. You can download this also internet. And master and doctor student is uh, additional assignment, uh, Christianity and liberalism by uh, uh, J. Gresham Machen. Uh, you can read, download and read and submit the reading log. Course grade. Uh, reading is very important. 30% uh, uh, watching a video clip, uh, lecturer, lecturing, and 10% answering after you see the video clip uh, must be answer three questions after watching each lecture. And final examination, 60%, uh, all 100%. No quiz, uh, no testimony, uh, no critic. Uh, so uh, focus on your reading. 
all the for final examination all question will be uh, true or false uh, it's very easy so don't worry about the uh, examination reading and watching video clips already 40 percent you just get the 20 percent from final examination so I believe that all the students may pass this course. Uh, next is the uh, preposition of theology. It's not only for this class, but all the class of theology. Uh, this is Latin, quod uh, non est biblicum, non est theologicum. What's this? What is not biblical is not theological. Uh, remember, don't forget, because today a lot of Bible colleges and seminaries around the world, but they are just enjoying the study theology. But this theology is not based on the Bible. So they criticize the Bible, they import all the worldly theories into theological field. So now they despise the biblical knowledge and they forget the Bible. One of my friend, the Reverend Mark Kim, uh, he is the principal of BCEA, uh, Kenya and Rwanda. Uh, his daughter, uh, Deborah Kim, now she is studying in England for her PhD degree. But sometimes she said to us, it is very, very ridiculous because all the doctors, New Testament and Old Testament, they are discussing some subject but they never, never mention about the Bible. And they never, never teach the Bible. They never respect the Bible. They just want to make a new theory. So the Reverend Markim's daughter, now she is writing about the blood of Jesus Christ in First Peter. She is just uh, writing about classical, traditional work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It's very simple and basic for Christians, but the professors in New Testament said, oh, this is dearly, dearly new, because they never know the knowledge from the Bible. Ridiculous. So don't forget, God non as the biblicum, non as theologicum. What is not biblical is not theological. I love Firestone Bible College because I learn the Bible itself from my teachers. Now, my country, South Korea, has a lot of Bible colleges. But the students, they graduate from the Bible college, but they still don't know what Bible teaches. What they have to teach to their congregations. Remember, the Bible is everything for us. So we are fighting to defend the Bible itself. So VPI, Bubble Plenary Inspiration, is very, very important doctrine because all the authority of the Bible comes from this precious doctrine. If the Bible is not inspired by God, this is nothing. We believe in that Bible is God's word. Why? Because this Bible is inspired by God. It brings us the will of God. It brings us the salvation knowledge. 
But next battle after inspiration comes from VPP. What is VPP? Bubble plenary preservation. Bubble plenary inspiration and bubble plenary preservation are the twin doctrine by Reverend Dr. Timothy Toll. What is twin doctrine? It's same. The Lord uh, inspired the Bible, all the word, all the contents, but without verbal plenary preservation, we cannot have the very word inspired by God. Some word disappeared, some word changed. What is the inspiration of the Bible? It's nothing. So if we believe the bubble plenary inspiration, we must believe the bubble plenary preservation. So we have the perfect Bible in our hand today. Now we are learning all the precious lessons from this Bible. Inspired and preserved. And we are teaching also from this Bible. So Bible is everything for us. So remember, God known as biblical, known as theological. What is not biblical is not theological. Do not be a theologian. Be a student of the Bible. We must be a Man of the book, only one book, the Bible. Be a doctor of the Bible, not be a doctor of theology. So it will save you from the dangers of the all theological colleges and seminaries. You know, why so many Bible colleges and seminaries, they, they were falling down? Because they lost the word of God. So word of God is everything. This is preposition of theology. So don't forget, remember. So I'll introduce you one verse from the Bible. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Take heed unto thyself in un and unto the doctrine, continuing them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Uh, I was serving as a pastor of Korean congregation in True Life BB Church during six years. After that, I became the missionary to Africa. Uh, after my six years ministry, one church member asked me, during six years of ministry, what do you have? He asked me. So I thinking, I was thinking and thinking again. And finally I said to him, I saved myself through my six years of ministry. The Bible college students and a lot of pastors, they always focus on the others. They are preaching, they are teaching the Bible to save the others. But sometimes they are lost because they never save themselves. It's very terrible and very sad stories. I believe not all the pastors, some pastors, they cannot go to heaven. Even though they are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they never, never believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes, unbelieved pastors, they can be a pastor, one church, and they can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of course, some people will be born again by the preaching 
of this ungenerated generated pasta, not born again pasta, not because of this pasta himself, it's because of the power of God's word, power of gospel of Jesus Christ. In Old Testament, we can we have to remember the King Saul. I believe he was not a believer. He disobeyed God's commandments. He was forsaken king by God. Nevertheless, as a king, he did something good. Even he was prophesied by the Holy Spirit. But it's not for himself because but because he was the king of God's people. So the Holy Spirit he Holy Spirit was with him during his kingship. But uh, David he was anointed by Samuel that time the Holy Spirit departed from the King Saul. Why? He was not the king anymore. And the evil spirit possessed King Saul because he was not a believer. It's my theology. So be careful. In your ministry, you must save yourself first. After that, you must save your family member first. And next, we can, you can save the others. How can we save ourselves? Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. What is doctrine? This is all the precious lesson from the God's word. And continuing them. Not only in the Bible college, after graduating in your ministry, you must continue focus on the doctrine, God's word. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear, that hear thee. Remember, Now we are learning about the history of fundamentalism. The fighting of fundamentalists is not just our the blood of our physical something like this. This is fighting about the doctrines. So fundamentalists, they were fighting against all the liberalism and modernism because the liberalists and modernists they denied all the fundamental doctrines from the Bible. Now liberals and the modernists uh, they are not believers, they are not Christians because they all deny fundamental doctrines from the Bible what they believed in? Nothing. So I believe they are not Christians. Even though they had the church buildings, they had the name of denomination, uh, Bible Presbyterian Church in United States of America, PCUSA. This is liberal denomination. The pastors, uh, a few days ago, the moderate of this denomination, PCUSA, was uh, one lady pastor. And they decide to allow the pastorship ordination to the homosexual pastors. How can you believe they are believers? They are Christians. Well, I don't believe that. Outwardly, they uh, imitate, 
imitating all the rituals and all the traditions of Christianity, but inside of them there is no biblical truth. They never believe in Jesus Christ. So we are saying to them, come out from that kind of liberal denominations. This fighting from the 19th, 18th, 18th century, uh, 17th century, oh no, no, sorry, sorry, 19th century from Europe and USA. Nowadays, we still face this kind of rebellion, apostasies. Okay, next is the journey to fundamentalism. This is my personal testimony. Uh, I was born uh, not in Christian family, so I never contact with the Christianity until 10 years old. So my village has no church. So I never heard the gospel message. And 10th year of my life, my mother uh, removed my house to one small town. I saw that city, that town, the church first time. So I attend the church. But I never believed in Jesus Christ during seven years. I was very diligent, so I served Sunday school teacher from 15 years old. 15 years, seven, 16 years, 17 years, 3 years, I served as a Sunday school teacher. And that church was a Presbyterian church, but also charismatic church. So I was a charismatic church member. So after my born again, 17 years old, uh, I really, really desire to have the gifts. Uh, finally, I could speak in tongue. Don't ask me. <laughs> Please speak in tongue. <laughs> Don't say. I forget. Uh, everything I forsake on old habits. Eh? So that time, my pri primary concern was having more gifts eh? because my church was a uh, uh, charismatic church. But I entered uh, 1988. I entered Bible college. Uh, so 1993, including two years uh, national service, I got the Bachelor of Arts in Theology from the College of the Presbyterian General Assembly in Korea. Uh, from this Bible college, I learned a lot of theology, the biblical knowledge. So I changed my position, charismatic to new evangelical. And 1994, 1996, I got the MDV degree, but this time I had uh, some crisis in my faith because um, my teacher of Greek reading, he brought one text and we were reading together the Matthew. And I saw the, the prayer was taught by the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm reading the text and finally I found some word, some words were missing from Greek Bible. The, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. That, that, Bible has no this kind of words. So I raise up my hand and I ask to my professor, Sir, where is the some words in this Bible? He said, in original text, 
There are no these words. So I ask him again. If the Bible text, original text, Greek text has no this portion, we have to take out this word from our Bible. This is reasonable. He said, no, 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 no. We still must put this word. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and forever and ever. So I couldn't understand. And he never, never explained to me why some words disappear from the Bible. So I had a confusion. From that time, I had uh, some questions. Is our Bible perfect? Mistake? After that, 1997 to 2000, I had, uh, I studied for BRE from Firestone Bible College. I learned biblical separation. And, but that time, the, the controversy of the VP is not so sharp. So, the teaching of VPP was not so focused on. So I couldn't learn everything about the VPP. But still, I got a very good um, lesson from my teachers, the Dr. Reverend To and also Dr. Jeffrey Koo, Reverend Dr. Kwek Sanyu, and Dr. Dash Koshi. They are still uh, my good teachers. But I was not a 100% perfect fundamentalist. I was a half fundamentalist. After that, I went back to Korea. I went, I entered uh, one uh, secular university, Gyeonghi University, for my Master of Arts in History degrees. I learned from my professor, he was an uh, elder. Actually, so he studied about the uh, Christian worldview and Christian historical view also. So I learned everything from him. Also, I learned interpretation of history and studied Augustine, also classical Latins. After that, 2003 to 2011, I studied for my PhD degree. First time I studied about the uh, Puritans because I believe Puritans are our ancestor of faith. But I studied and I checked every books and references. I had a conclusion. Puritans are not our ancestor of faith. Rather, Puritans the descendant of Puritan, especially in USA, they supported liberals. So I gave up to study about Puritans. I changed my study to the fundamentalism. A result of my study, I wrote my dissertation history of fundamentalism in America. Now I'm teaching you history of fundamentalism as based on my doctoral dissertations. Uh, 2006, uh, actually I went to Aberdeen University in Scotland, but the Lord suddenly redirect my path, so he make me stop in Singapore. So I entered FABC again. So that time I studied for THM and THD. So six years I served also as a pastor of Korean congregation. So result of my THM study, uh, Textus Receptus Parsing Guide. And for THD, uh, t um, Textus Receptus Declension Guide. No, I was reading the Greek text. Uh, we need uh, some utilities to understand. 
Uh, we have to save the time. So, but I never find the parsing guide for text to receptors in our library. So I went to Dr. Jeffrey Ku. Uh, is there any parsing guide for text to receptors? He said, no, we don't have. So I asked. I said to him, why we don't have the textus receptus parsing guide? He said, no, nobody made this. I got angry. Uh, the corrupted text, the, the, someone using the corrupted text, textus criticus, they are using all the utilities. And they are studying. But we say the textual receptors is 100 preserved God's word. But we never made this, this kind of parsing guide. So I got angry. So I, okay, I will make a parsing guide. A TL parsing guide. He said, okay. So I made this. You can find in library. So I finished all this for my THM thesis. And Dr. Ku asked me, then you made the parsing guide for the, all the verbs in the textus receptus. How about the other words, the nouns and... So I asked him, are you asking me make the declension guide? <laughs> he said, yes. So I made the declension guide for my THD degree, dissertation project. Now, after my, from my THM degree and THD degree, I studied the verbal plenary preservation. And every precious lesson from my teachers, I became the 100% fundamentalist. It is very important because we have to know our root, our own history. The fundamental history is none other than our own history. So it is very, very important for us. You know, in this world, even in Christianity, the biblical fundamentalist, even the Bible Presbyterian Church is minority. We cannot deny this. Even the, all the Bible Presbyterian Church now they divide several parts. Actually, in Korea, we also had the Bible Presbyterian churches, Bible Presbyterian colleges, but now all this appears. Why? Because they never think about the history. How precious is the history of fundamentalism? So we have to learn carefully and we have to learn sincerely this history. It will give us some convictions who we are, where we come from. You have to know. We have uh, the Father in our faith. We have to know. In Korea, in my house, we have uh, genealogy. No? We trace back our old uh, ancestor, even the beginning of our country. My 57th father recorded it. This is a secular customs. But we have also genealogy, our faith. Someone hand over, pass over this faithful, this sincere knowledge to us. So we are believing in Jesus Christ and now we are having the precious knowledge from the Bible. So we have to remember all the knowledge of fundamentalism and all the men who were fighting against apostasy in this world for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
fundamentalism is Christianity itself. Uh, now we are uh, listening about fundamentalism, Muslim fundamentalism, also Hindu fund, a lot of fundamentalism, but it's not positive meaning, it's a very, very negative meaning today. So Muslim fundamentalists mean they are terrorists. But in Christianity, the fundamentalists and fundamentalism, we have to see this positively. The fundamentalism is none other than Christianity itself. So, um, the ancient church history, we call Christianity as apostolic faith. The Bible said the way. Okay? But the uh, end, the time passed away, and through medieval church, uh, we have our ancestors also. And after Reformation, we call this faithful knowledge from the Bible, we call this Reform Theology. And after that, the controversy against Arminianism, we call this Calvinism. But same, same doctrine and same knowledge from the Bible. And how about the modern day? After liberalist and after modernist, some Christians, they rose against this kind of apostasy. We call them fundamentalist. We call their doctrine fundamentalism. So apostolic faith and the Calvinism, reform theology and fundamentalism, all the same, all has the same contents, but only difference is, is the name according to the, their environment, their days. Okay, so remember this. So fundamentalism is Christianity itself. Don't forget this. So now my country also, someone said, are you fundamentalist? Only a few people uh, uh, answered, I am a fundamentalist. Because now all of the Christians, they treat this name fundamentalism and fundamentalist as a negative way, okay? But I am very strongly say to the others, I am a fundamentalist. Because I know what fundamentalist is. Biblical fundamentalism. So remember, fundamentalism is Christianity itself. If you are not fundamentalist, biblically, it means you are not Christians. Because fundamentalism means they hold on, fundamentalists hold on fundamental doctrines in the Bible, like a virgin birth of Jesus Christ. But the liberals, modernists, they deny virgin birth of Jesus Christ. But we still believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. It's the essential doctrine of the Bible. The history of the fundamentalism is the history of the true church of the modern age, our days. So we have to remember three words, fundamentalism and history and genuine church. So, true church has a history. Our days, in modern days, true church history is the history of fundamentalism. So we are learning the true church's history of our days. What is fundamentalism? Uh, in Chinese world, we pronounce this Gunbon Ju. 
This uh, fundamentalism derived from Latin words fundamentum, which means foundation or base. Fundamentalism is doctrine on the foundations of Christianity. No, we have to build one building. The most important thing is not the this wall, this um, some this light. Okay, the most important thing is the foundation. We cannot see foundation, but it's most important thing. Now this Bible called FPS Hall and the. Uh, all the dormitories over 60 years, right? But it still remains. Why? A lot of the money put on the ground. This is a foundation. So no foundation. We cannot build the buildings. Now in Africa, the Bible College of East Africa, Tanzania, has uh, main buildings. But main buildings has cracked all the walls. You know, we spend a lot of money, but the construct, constructor, he steal the money. He never put the money on the ground. So now, only 15 years, all the buildings cracked. So we always feeling the dangers collapse down someday. Even the church buildings, so we always are renovating maintenance to protect our fellow believers. If we collapse down, someone will die. Eh? The foundation is most important. Likewise, in our faith, our life, spiritual life, most important thing is the doctrines on the foundations of Christianity. The doctrines based on the foundation of the knowledge, the Bible. So fundamentalism always focused on the Bible itself. We deny the other authorities. We only accept one authority, final, supreme. Only authority for Christians is the Bible, God's word. Remember this. And this fundamentalism is a reaction against the modernism. Uh, if there is no, there was no modernism, fundamentalism was not disappeared, was not appeared in history. We just say ourselves we are Calvinist or we are Reformed theologians. But modernists came out from unbelief. We have to fight against this kind of unbelief. So we call ourselves fundamentalist we believe fundamental because we want to depend fundamental doctrine in the bibles this is the reason why fundamentalism and fundamentalist uh, appeared in history and here we have to see what is history uh, Christian view, the Bible is a uh, history as it was. So we uh, can see all the historical record in the Bible, not only in the historical books, all the Bible from Genesis to Revelation full of historical record. The Bible contains interpretation of history. So in New Testament quoted, uh, brought a lot of the record from Old Testament and they interpret this history and apply to the life of the saints. This is the interpretation of the history, especially the works of prophets. It's related with the 
interpretations of history. History is the study of God's providence in the world. So we cannot say history is history, Bible is Bible, God is God. We cannot say God control everything, even human history. So now we are facing pandemic, a coronavirus, but don't forget, God control everything. God is teaching us this environment. We have to learn this kind of things. Someone said history is his story. But this is not English expression, but I am not agree 100%. Nevertheless, the, we have to know the birth of Jesus Christ is the most important point in the human history. So now we are using word BC and AD. What is BC? BC is before Christ. AD is Anno Domini, means in the year of the Lord. Now it's AD 2020, right? It means Jesus Christ came into this world before 2020. So he is most important man in the history of human being. Of course, the Eastern view uh, his, about history, the people of the East, like uh, Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, they had a view of history. I call this Eastern view. Uh, this is a Chinese character. I, I don't know how can I pronounce, but in Korea we call this Sa, means two words, combined two words. One is book and another is the man. So man uh, has the book. This is the history. History relate uh, with the books, okay? The Eastern view of history, history is the story of man through the books. So in Chinese, and Koreans, I don't know the Japanese, but I studied the Chinese history and Korean history. They always wrote everything. They just follow the kings, and king said anything, they wrote down everything. Sometimes king forced them, do not write down this thing. And they said, the king said, do not write down this. This is the history of Eastern people. Also, the uh, we call, we here we can see one famous man, uh, Confucius, Gong Zi, right? Yeah, he wrote uh, Chun Chu in Korean pronunciation, Spring and Autumn Annals. He wrote down all the histories. Also, another man, very famous man, this is the Sima Chen, the record of history. I read his book, he uh, wrote down all the history, and the last part, he put his comment. It is interpretation of the history. Also, Western. The people, they had a view of history. Uh, history, the word, English word, history comes from Greek word, historia. Also Latin, historia, which means inquiry of the, or the result of inquiry. So knowledge acquired by investigation. It means research. If you want to know anything, you have to go somewhere and research. This is the history. This word comes from the man, father of history, Herodotus, an ancient Greek historian. 
he, he Herodotus he announced the size and scope of his work at the beginning of his researches of history. It's very thick book. Uh, I started uh, reading this book, history written by Herodotus. Twenty years I finished this book. Very boring, you no. Know? But some uh, record, I learned very good information, understand the Bible, especially the Corinth church. You no, know? you know the Corinth, Corinth church has uh, some problem, especially the sexual problem in the church. Do you know the reason? In Corinth has uh, one temple of Greek god Aphrodite. Aphrodite means the goddess of love. So, but the love for Greek is not the love of Christians. We are already thinking about the love of agape. This is a sacrificial love. The very gracious love, but the Greeks love is always the erotic love. It means always with the man and woman, the sexual relationship. So they want to worship the goddess of love. It means they must have uh, sexual intercourse with each other. Sometimes uh, in the temple of Aphrodite, there were over 2,000 halot. Ladies, they sell their the body with money. And they collect the money, they donate all the money for their goddess. 2,000 halot in the city. So for Corinthian people, the adultery is not problem for them. It's a very uh, holy and very faithful the activity to their own goddess. So they import this kind of custom into the church. They said it's no problem. This is the Corinthian. I learned from the Herodotus. But Paul said, no. Outside of the church, they are not believer. Uh, we cannot touch them. But inside of the church, you are born again Christians. You must forsake all the worldly customs. You cannot bring this kind of things into the church. Eh? So if you have a time, uh, if you, uh, you cannot sleep night, read this book. You can sleep very well. Uh, Herodotus of Halicarnassus, his researches are here, set down to preserve the memory of the past by putting on record the astonishing achievement both of our own and of other peoples, and more particularly to show how they came into conflict. This is the reason why he wrote his book, uh, Historia. So remember, the writing is very, very important. Uh, because now this party and this party fighting each other. And this party is writing uh, everything. But this party just, uh, let's fight, but no recording. After 10 years, 20 years, the descendant, they can use only record of these parties, this size. So. What is the conclusion? And also, these parties, they twist and toast all the information according to their own will. So, to prevent this kind of thing, this party also write down their own fightings. Okay? So, don't forget, 
to write down. History is most important thing. Now we have a lot of books from ancient. The book of Martin Luther, book of Calvin. They wrote down all the things and now, oh, this is God's word. Oh, they was fighting against all the heretical thought and all the false doctrines. Now we know. So remember, don't be lazy to write down. Be a historian. Okay. Maxims of history. History repeats itself. It's a very famous word. And history is a continuous process of interaction between the historian and facts. An unending dialogue between the present and the past. Uh, is uh, spoke uh, by E. H. Carr. Okay, so we just can see the history, the past, but we can some answer for present day, because the time changed, environment changed, but people, the person, never change in their character. They are sinners. They are very selfish. So now I had some experience of life. Now I'm over. Now in Korean age 52, Singapore age 50. Okay? So I have some experience. I had some knowledge of history, and so I have also. I have also the knowledge of the Bible. So now I can see. So what happened to them? I understood why they are doing like this. Because history tells us something from the past. And the past is a needle eye to see the future. So we don't know about the future. But you study the past and you can understand the present. And you can see very small and you can see the future. This is the benefit from history. And remember God is the creator, the sustainer, and the judge of history. So remember this. So you are genuine Christian, true believer. Don't afraid anything. Everything is under control of God. You know, some people they are ex exercising very diligently to have the good health to extend their life. But I don't believe that. Okay. I believe all the life depend on God's will. Today God's, God calls you to heaven. You must go to heaven. Cannot resist this God's will. Right? Even though, oh Lord, I exercise very hard every day, two hours, three hours, be my muscles. No, it's the God calls you to heaven. Oh, my boy, it is time to come. Your eternal home. That's all. God control everything. Okay? Now, Africa has a very dangerous condition. No testing of the coronavirus. Uh, they cannot calculate how many people uh, affected by coronavirus. They, a lot of people die. But I am here. Uh, maybe it is possible I can have the coronavirus in Singapore or even in Korea. Mm -hmm. to, di to die or to live is depend on God's will. But I'm very happy here because only I can live with my family member, my wife and my two daughters. Besides my wife, I'm dying is better than alone, right? So don't afraid anything. God control. I still remember Reverend Crack's uh, teaching. 
uh, when I come, I came to Africa as, as a missionary, that time, the Ebola virus broke out in Africa. So my uh, father-in-law and my father, they very worried uh, son. Not this time. Later, you can go. So I write down to Reverend Kek. This is my family reaction. What can I do? Reverend Kek said, Well, God sent you is most safe place for his servant. It's right. So, okay. I'll go. And I went to Africa with Ebola virus. But I didn't die. But now, the coronavirus, the same. Same principle must be applied to our life. If I die in Africa, if I die in Singapore, it's okay. It's God's will. I believe in Jesus Christ. After my death, I'm going to heaven, the bosom of our Father. It's good for me, actually. So remember, God is creator, the sustainer, and the judge of history. Remember this. Okay, let's see interpretation of the Bible. Uh, revelation by God. And recording. Inspiration by the Holy Spirit. And preservation by God through the time. And exegesis. Illumination by Holy Spirit. And preaching to the saints. An application for today. This is the word from God's mouth to the hands of men, hand, the heart of the people. So, here the interpretation, exegesis, illumination by Holy Spirit is very important. Uh, you know, the Matthew chapter 4, the Lord was tempted, tested by the tester, by Satan. You know, the Satan, he was using the Bible verses to test Jesus. Also, Jesus Christ was using the Bible verses to overcome the test. The Satan used the Bible. The Jesus Christ used the Bible. It's very interesting, right? I believe the usage of the Jesus Christ is correct. But the using the Bible of Satan is wrong. Eh? So, the theologically, theologi we are using theological terms the Jesus Christ, he was using the exegesis. Okay? But the Satan, he was, in, was using the eisegesis. What is, do you know what is exegesis? Exegesis means Bible lead us, we are just follow the Bible. This is exegesis. We just obey everything to the Bible. What, what is eisegesis? In Greek was the ace. The preposition ace means into. Eisegesis means we are bring the some meaning from outside of the Bible into the Bible. Actually, the Satan was using the, some verses from Bible, but it's not comes from the Bible. He want to use the Bible to say his own mind and his own will. 
this is I suggest this. It's demonic interpretation of the Bible. Very, very careful. The Bible college student, you are using the Bible always, reading the Bible, you are preaching, but sometimes you are preaching. It's not exegesis. This is interpretation of the demons. Demonic interpretation. I exegesis. So be careful. Likewise, interpretation of history. Real fact as it was by man, a recording by the writer, a remaining by time, and researching by the reader, and reconstructing of the real fact as it was. It's very important. We cannot twist, cannot toss the meaning, the fact of the history, and application for today. So I learned Bible uh, interpretation. So I learned also historical interpretation. Very similar. So if you uh, if you read the the book, you must be careful. Some some writers they are not giving us the fact as it was. They twist it and. Cost it the meaning. Okay? So, if you read the old book of history, you have to have the questions. We call this filtering. What is filtering? Can we trust the writer? So now you are training uh, by your teachers. Uh, some subject ask you the critic, right? A critic, you must uh, write down who the background, who is a writer, what is uh, his the educational background, and you also uh, write down, crit criticize about the uh, publisher also, right? What is this? You are questioning, can we trust the writer? If we cannot the writer, he is a liberal. Oh, this man will say something dangerous things. We know that, right? The historical books also same. Uh, later, I will say you about the history, brief history from the apostolic church to today's church. But in the Middle Age, uh, the Roman Catholic Church is not true church, you know. This apostate church and false church. But someone said, uh, the Reformation comes out from Roman Catholic Church, right? But I do not agree with this one. So later I'll explain to you. Then why? Why we are saying the Reformation Church, Reformation comes out from Roman Catholic Church. Because the Middle Ages Church, Roman Catholic Church, Roman Catholic writers, Roman Catholic theologians, they erase all the record of genuine and faithful churches in the history. Until today, some historians, they still attack the reformers. And they still attack the saints in genuine Christians in Middle Ages. Like uh, Stephen Zubayk and uh, Philip Sharp. Philip Sharp, he is a very great theologian. But he, some, his historical view has some problems. So be careful. He is very, very pro-Roman Catholic. He also uh, joined the ecumenical movement. So be careful. The Philip Sharp. I love the man who I already mentioned you, Steve. It should happen to the bike. But his uh, writing is very vivid and very interesting. But he attacked the reformers. But 
Now, the recently, I knew the character of the Stephen G. Bike and Philip Sharp historians. They are Roman. They loved. They accept on of all Roman Catholic view of history. So be careful. Can we trust the writer? And second, can we trust the book itself? The wrong information. And it's not just actually, but the human writers, they have their own face, even whether it's genuine face or false face. They have uh, some conviction. They have uh, the historical views. So they, according to their view, they select all the information. Okay? So we have to question, can we trust the book itself? And third, can we trust the contents in the book? And can we trust ourselves also? If you are conservative Christians, you always favor to conservative books and conservative writers, conservative uh, contents, right? But you are liberals, you hate the conservative books. So FEBC already publishes very good content, very conservative, but some people attack FEBC books. We also criticize and do not believe yourself. Okay, so always, am I the man of the Bible? Question yourself. What is the benefit of the of this research? And you question this kind of things, and you can have very good view to see the history. Recently, I read one the article by a PBC student. Uh, the another party of BP Church in Singapore, they uh, published one book, right? And they said, we are the orthodox line of Singapore Bible Presbyterian Church. And uh, the other side, including FABC, True Life BP Church, and Calvary Panda BP Church, Gethsemane, uh, so on and so far, this kind of church is something wrong. They are going to wrong way. The original BP Church is not like this, right? This is history. They are toasting, they are uh, twisting all the information all the histories. So, but the other peoples who never know about the real genuine history of Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore, they are believing their record. So, this side always uh, writing down, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. We have to say something. We have to fight with our sermon and with our writings. Okay? okay, this time I want to introduce you the tree of theology to understand what is the uh, church history. Okay? Uh, you can see the tree of theology. The root is a biblical theology. Okay? So Bible is our foundation, our root, our basis of the tree. No Bible tree cannot survive. So you have to learn the biblical theology. The tree has a trunk, right? This trunk is the systematic theology. And the tree has uh, also branches. The branches is uh, church history. And also a uh, tree has uh, the flower and fruits. This is the pastoral theology. So we have to learn Bible and we have to learn uh, systematic theology and we have to learn past uh, church history and 
the result must come out from pastoral theology. Uh, you learn three years or four years, six years, seven years, ten years in Christ and Bible College, after graduating, you must teach the Bible correctly and deeply. If you cannot teach the Word of God to the people, and 10 years study in FABC is nothing. It's useless. Uh, I, I was very young in the Bible college of, for my BA degree. I despised the pastoral theology. Uh, it's nothing learned from pastoral theology. But after now, 30 years, okay, experience in theology, I focused on pastoral theology. So the qualification of the pastor in First Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 8 told us, say to us, one qualification of the pastor is apt to teach. No? So you cannot teach the people the Bible correctly and very deeply. Uh, you cannot be a pastor. It's a very serious matter. This is pastoral theology. Okay? So we have to train uh, this four area, all the area. Today the the other uh, Bible college and seminaries problem is they divide all the theology. If you want to get THM degree, you must choose one area, uh, biblical, Bible, and you must divide two parts, Old Testament and New Testament. If you take Old Testament, uh, do, don't think about the New Testament and systematic theology and pastoral theology. Only focus on the Old Testament. Okay? If you want to study systematic theology, don't think about the Bible even. Don't think about the history. Don't think about pastoral theology. This is the problem. But the Firestone Bible College focused on every area. Of course, this is very, very difficult. You must learn Greek, you must Hebrew in doctoral course, you must learn Aramaic, Latin, and everything you must learn. You must teach some student here. Also, you must take uh, examination, every area. If you fail one subject, you cannot pass. You cannot get the, the degree. This is Faison Bible College. Very good. So what is biblical theology? Study on the Bible. Theology of Old and New Testament. And biblical languages. Interpretation of the Bible, etc. This is biblical uh, theology. What is systematic theology? As um, bi uh, Bible Bible laws means study on the Bible about uh, VPI, VPP like this. Uh, we must uh, have the doctrine of the Bible, sound doctrine of the Bible, VPI, VPP. And theism, study on God. Anthropology, study on man and sin. And Christology, soteriology, ecclesi ecclesiology, Eschatology on and the contemporary theology, apologetics, uh, like this, and pastoral theology, homiletics, uh, church administration, missions, biblical counselings, principles and practice of prayer, Christian worship, uh, hymnology, church music, music theory, etc. Uh, very important, and also evangelism. Eh? Church history, ancient church history, medieval church history, reformation history, modern church history, cults, 
and Bible Presbyterian Church Street. Also, the Korea, Korean Church Street, Singapore Church Street, American Church Street, and the history of fundamentalism. This kind of things is history. So, these four areas, if you miss any area, it will bring you very critical problems. So, be, uh, have a balance. Four areas. Okay? Uh, church history. What is church? Church means ecclesia. It's uh, ek plus kaleo. It means uh, the Lord called the church member out of the world. This is the church. Church is not mean, never means the building. Church always uh, people. Now we cannot gather together in the church building, but it's still okay. Because church always means the people, the saints. So we are gathered together. Okay? Uh, even two or three people worship the Lord, the Lord always be with them. So no problem for us. Those who have been called from the world to be holy, this is the church. This is biblical separation. Uh, Greek words, the saints, hagioi. Eh? This is the saints. Hagioi means the holy ones. Right? People, not building. Church is the... Two kind of church. One is visible church. Another is invisible church. Visible church, we can see. Uh, now you are the one of the visible church. But we still have invisible church on the earth and on uh, in heaven also. Okay. The earthly church and heavenly church. The church is on the earth. But still in heaven, uh, we have the church. This is a perfect church. And militant church and triumphal church. Uh, our church is a militant church. It means we must fight against all the errors, false doctrines, false Christ, false teachers. Militant church. Triumphal church in the heaven. So the, our church on the earth usually visible, earthly, and militant. Don't forget this. So do not afraid to fight. If you are church member, you are genuine Christians, you must fight against all the errors. Uh, just before my graduation for my doctor degree in FEBC, uh, Reverend Quack, he advised me, now you have no problem in doctrine, but be careful conduct. Satan is trying to destroy you with conduct. So you must be a good man. And you must fight against good fight, against all the errors. Don't think be a good man. Okay? If you every member in your church loves you, you are not true servant of God. Because uh, in the church, always mixed congregations, the good genuine Christian and false Christians. False Christians, they still do not believe in Jesus Christ. They still against God's will. And how can they love you? They love you. You preach the gospel, you asking them uh, repentance. They still against God's will. They still don't want to repent their sin. So they must hate you. Someone loves you very much. 
but someone hate you very much. But everybody loves you. It means you never, never preach God's word according to the Bible. I agree with him. Remember, our church is the militant church, ready to fight against all the errors. The church, the English word church comes from Kirk, an informal name for the Church of Scotland from 17th century, compared with German Kirche, the same word derived from the Koine Greek, uh, Kurianon Soma means Lord's house, the body of the Lord. This is the church. 